I'm a big tiling window manager guy. I spend all my day in a tiling window manager, and I do tend to float around between several of the tiling window managers, but DWM and i3 seem to be my favorites. Right now I'm in i3, but that's really beside the point. The reason why I bring up tiling window managers is because today we're going to be taking a look at a distribution that is catered towards people who use tiling window managers. And that distribution is called Axel. Now, JDog, one of my patrons, has sent this in to me and asked me to take a look at it. And I took a gander and thought I would make a video about it. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, so Axel is an arch-based distribution that is catered towards people who are interested in tiling window managers. They have several tiling window managers that you can choose from. As far as I know, you install those via during install, but I'm not actually sure yet. And other than that, there's not a lot on their website. We can actually take a look at their website right now. We just have a picture here and the download button. Good job of putting the download button right there up front. And then we have a list of their window managers that they have here, along with the themes that the window managers have. Other than that, there's not much here. Now, they do have a GitHub page that has more information on it if you want it. I've perused it a little bit, but most of this stuff looks to be just pictures of the window managers themselves along with some installation instructions and the default key bindings of as far as I know every single one of the window managers that they use use these key bindings they do have some specific key bindings to specific window managers as well you can click on the link just below this in order to find those key bindings so that's the website let's go ahead and jump into a virtual machine here and make this full screen. Now, there's several things that I'm going to point out right off the start. For whatever reason, there's this conky right behind my face here. I'll move that. Uh, and that is actually over a terminal. So if we close the terminal here, I believe Super C closes a window. And if you op if we open up another terminal, which is Super Enter, Super Shift Enter. And that actually opened up floating, and I don't know why. Super Enter. There we go. We'll close this one. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, because apparently they have the meta key bound to what I'm guessing is Rofi or some kind of launch script. So it's kind of pulling double duty. But the point I was trying to make was, as you can see, that for whatever reason, the conky is actually over the window. And that kind of goes for everything. As far as I can tell, the brief time I've spent with this, every full screen window I've had has had this conky over top of it. Which is really weird. But anyways, let's go ahead and just install this thing and see how it goes. So they use the Calamari's installer, and we're actually getting a full screen, which is not usually with it. Is we can Okay, so this is I3, so this is actually not... We can make that floating with that key binding. Luckily, I'm using I3 so I, right now, so I can remember the default key bindings, otherwise I would forget. So let's go ahead and hit Next. And on our first screen, it's asking what video driver you want, and we'll just go ahead and leave that blank for now. Although we probably can install the open source one. And as you can see, I clicked on that, but it doesn't actually look like I selected it, does it? There is, if you deselect that so it's not highlighted, you can see there's a little very faint checkbox in there. So that's that theming kind of makes it kind of hard to see what's actually been checked, but it's not a deal breaker. So by default, i3 is checked here. And you could go through and install all these, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Now, I probably won't look at every single one of these in the video, but... I just want to see what happens if you install all of them. Because if I was personally going to use this, I'd install all of them. So, let's see here. By default, it chooses Chicago. I'll just choose Detroit because that's the right time zone. That's a reasonable keyboard. We'll erase disk. We don't need a swap. It does give you the choice, which is now, a, I believe, a default in Calamari's. You can go through and choose between ext4, ext3, and ButterFS. We'll just leave it at ext4. And we'll go ahead and hit next and enter our credentials. And we'll hit next again, and then it will confirm all the stuff that we just chose, and then we'll hit install. Now, I will go ahead and pause the video here, and we'll come back and take a look at some of these window managers. Okay, that is now installed. Let's go ahead and do a reboot here. So this appears to use LightDM as the display manager. I'm assuming that's what this is, but it is definitely themed. No matter what it is, we're going to go ahead and enter our password. And this is i3. Okay, so we're going to try to change the display resolution. Okay, now that we have a display resolution that is not, you know, horrible, we can see that that conky moved to the center, but I believe we can change, at least so it's off to the side, by reloading i3, which is control shift 
Control Shift and R, which is, by the way, a, the way a very very odd restart because usually it's Super Shift and R, but they've changed it to Control Shift and R. It's definitely a choice. Now they use the color uh, DT's color scripts in the terminal, which is cool. But also you'll see that the Conky has stayed on top. So let's go ahead and open up another application here, like Firefox, and see if. Firefox is also underneath the Conky, which and it is. It's underneath the Conky. Why on earth would you want the Conky over all of your applications? Like, that makes no sense to me at all. That has to be a bug. Like, it has to be a bug. But anyways, so we'll go back to the first workspace here, and we're going to kill all Conky. There's no process called Conky. So we can't even kill it. <laughs> okay. we're just. Gonna, I guess we're just going to have to put up with it. That's fine. All right. We'll... Super C to close. So this is the i3. Let's go ahead and log out here. What's the super control shift and Q again? Very odd. We're going to choose one of the different. We're going to choose uh, BSPWM this time. Enter password. Go into BSPWM and see if they have the same problem here. We'll open up a terminal. Ah, works fine in BSPWM. The conky is underneath it just where it's supposed to be. So that's an i3 thing. Weird. Because that doesn't do with... Like, I've had conky on i3 before, and I've doesn't never done it before. Now, I believe that this up here is going to be polybar. But I believe in i3, it was EWW. I might be wrong about that. Let's go ahead and close that and actually log out. We'll go back to i3 and find that out because I'm very curious because I've never used EWW before. I read on the GitHub pages they use EWW somewhere. Let's prop again and we'll type that. And no, oh, that's polybar. That's a very nice looking polybar. I've never, no, it's beyond me. I'd never be able to do all those rounded corners. That's beyond my skill set. But, um, so we've seen BSPW and, and i3. I guess we are going, annoyingly, They've pulled double duty. The reason why they've gone through and made all of their bindings start with control instead of super is because super, if you just press super, Rofi comes up. I'm pretty sure this is Rofi. But usually, I'm so used to the super app being for things, like killing the menu, which it is. If you open up a terminal and do super C, if you just accidentally tap it, the Rofi comes up. I'd, I'd have to change that. That'd annoy the hell out of me. So control, shift, and Q log out we're try this time we're going to try qtile we're going to go to qtile so this is what qtile looks like now is that the qtile bar xprop or is this something different this is going to be the qtile bar okay i have to say that is a very good looking qtile i'm kind of very happy with that i this is probably the one that i would use at least so far control shift and q to log out no control c control shift d Q, Q, X. Okay, kill. It should be super C. So why is super C not working? Super C is not working. Super C is not working. Okay. Why? I'm not sure. It says the same. To log out is still control shift and Q. That's not working either. So that's awesome. Yeah, I'm having some virtual box or virtual ma vert manager problems. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the power off button because that was frozen. At least the... Cursor was frozen. It wasn't typing anything. So maybe it didn't grab the key, the keyboard. So let's go ahead and start back up again. Get back into full screen. And that was Qtile. We'll go to DWM next. And we'll open up a terminal. Xrander-s. There we go. And uh, Control-Shift-R. I wonder if uh, to reload, Control-Shift-R actually works in DWM. It does. Okay. And once again, we have the conky above everything, which is... Annoying, <laughs> like really super annoying. I'm wondering if that's not a virtual machine thing simply because I don't, I just can't see anybody actually configuring it that way. So I'm, I'm just going to assume that that's, you know, the case that uh, it's just a VM thing. Now, in terms of what this looks like, this looks amazing. I wonder, I'm wondering what this is. This is the DWM bar. That's the DWM bar. That is a sexy DWM bar. I wonder how they did that. All right, so we're going to actually, I might try to go look at the other window managers, but I'm curious. So we're going to go, we're going to zoom in here, zoom in page up. Nope. Wonder. All right, so let's go ahead and install NeoFetch so we can actually see some stuff here. All right, so this is DWM using the fish shell as the default shell. This is Alacrity, so this should be super plus to zoom in. There we go. 
So this is alacrity. So that's easy. Okay. Now if we cd into dot config. This is where we should find all of our configuration files for everything. So we have i3 here. We have left wm. We have qtile, bspwm. I don't see dwm though. So I wonder if we cd up a level and do an ls here. Do we see ls-a? So I don't see a dot suckless. So we see our dot xmonad there. That's for xmonad. So supposedly alt e will, oops. Alt e will, oh interesting. The, the dwm one is in opt. That is weird. Okay, so we can uh, close that and we'll zoom in on here. So these are the, this is the DWM config. It does the include trick for doing different themes. So I wonder if they actually have different themes installed. I'll have to go see. CD slash OPT, do an LS here. We got CD into Axel, DWM. I don't like this, that this is an OPT, because I'm, what is it? Does that mean when you do an update, all of this stuff is going to get overwritten? I'm not sure, actually sure how that works. We do an LS here. So if we seed into themes, the only thing in there is one dark, so, but you could still create your own if you wanted to. We'll zoom in here again. I always forget to do that. Uh, LS here. What I'm looking for is the bar. Like, I'm trying to figure out what bar they're using, or the bar script if they're using DWM blocks or SL status. Okay, so they're using DWM blocks, which is what they're using to get this cool stuff up here. Where the DWM blocks configuration file is, I don't actually know, and I'm not gonna go looking for it, but I have to say, this looks really cool. Now, it reminds me of a Forker DWM called NVChad, so they're basing that heavily off this, and actually may be the exact code, I'm not sure, uh, but it's definitely a, uh, and took inspiration from that because they look quite similar. So let's go ahead and close this out, and we'll go look at some of the other window managers. So Control Shift Q to log out. And that was DWM. Now let's go ahead and look at left WM. We got to, only got two more left to go. And uh, left WM did not want to log in. Okay, TL. Took us right back to the display manager. Interesting, so we're not gonna get to look at, D, at left WM. Let's see if Xmonad will log in. It will. So that is Xmonad. Now we open up a terminal. The conky is on the bottom. So I'm, again, virtual machine problem. Okay, so this is, again, going to be Alacrity. They're going to use Alacrity across the board. I'm not quite sure what theme they're calling this. Is, are they calling this, a, like, a Nord theme? Not Nord. Grubbox. Seems a little bright for Grubbox, but it's kind of cool. Uh, let's see here. They have a drop-down menu. They don't. It's not drop-down. It just brings up Rofi. So let's open up Rofi and take a brief look at the applications that they have installed by default. So it looks like they're using a lot of the XFCE stuff as a backend, so you can actually have GUIs for settings. So that's what most of the stuff here is, is XFC stuff. The file manager is going to be, uh, that's Thunar, I believe. Yep, that's Thunar. And let's see here. That's the file manager settings. We've got Firefox, Genie, uh, GPIC for color picker. Have some stuff there for audio and stuff. A, uh, HTOP is installed by default. Keyboard, the Kavantum manager, which will help you with uh, theme cute applications. Mail reader, mail reader. Oh, that's just, oh, for the default, okay. Yeah, that's gonna be an XFCE thing. NVIDIA, so whether or not, even if you choose the open source video drivers, NVIDIA still seems to be installed whether you want them or not. Now, I don't remember, it's possible that I left the NVIDIA stuff checked when we did the install. That checkbox was so faint that it's possible that it was checked and I just didn't uncheck it, or they they just installed it by default whether you want it or not, which would be weird. Uh, Power Manager, which is going to be XFC stuff. I'm not seeing a lot of extra applications here. Terminal Emulator, which will just link via like a symlink to Alacrity. Uh, Vim Web Browser, which is going to be a symlink to Firefox. And Ranger is installed. That's all you got. It's very, very minimal. So that is Axel. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time going through the configuration files. That's something that I could do if anybody's interested, I suppose. The thing is... With window managers, I'm very picky with how things work. And I think that every window manager user is. We all have our own key bindings that we use and are almost reliant on. Like, for example, I can never use Super C for closing stuff. That's just not what I want. I want Super Q. It's just how I've been hardwired to use. I, I know DT uses Super Shift and C to close stuff. And I know a lot of people use that. I know people who use Super X. So everybody has their own way of doing things. And that's one of the hardest things to do 
when you're trying to promote a distribution that is for other people, you know, because everyone has their own wants and needs in terms of key bindings and stuff. But so you can't, you're never going to be able to please everybody on that. So that's the reason why I didn't really go through the configuration files because that'd be the first thing that I'd go in there and change. Now, in terms of look and appearance, it's kind of amazing, honestly. The bars themselves throughout the window managers that we looked at, they're all really cool. You can tell they've put a lot of effort into making those bars look really good. And as someone who does a lot of racing, I can tell you right now, that takes some effort. So I'm kind of impressed with the look and feel. Now, I wish that the window managers had alternate themes that you could go through and do. So like, I know like at left WM allows you to change themes and stuff like that through their configuration file. And there are ways of doing that in other window managers as well. So it'd be cool if like say D the DWM has had other themes that you could switch to using that include line. I'm assuming that that's something that they could do in the future. That'd be neat. The only other thing that I would s really complain about is that you get your configuration files for every window manager except for DWM in your home directory. The DWM stuff has, is hidden away in OPT. And I don't like that. I want that in my home directory where I can actually see it and where I'm, I'm not going to be worried that if I pull down an update to whatever... I, I, all my configuration is going to get overwritten. That, I'd be very worried about that. So that is Axel. If you're interested in this type of distribution, leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you again, JDog, for sending this in. It's possible that I'm going to steal their configs for a couple of these window managers because I kind of want to uh, play around with them some more. As for if I had ever actually installed the distro on hardware, I don't know. I've done a lot of Arch-based distros lately, so maybe in, sometime in the future. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Today, Devon, Patrick L. Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Amp Tools, Steve A., Subregular Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, Eve, Andy, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter A., Crucible, Dark Bandit 6, Lead A., and Primus. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.